All right, hello everybody, and welcome to Good News Freedom Show. And as every week, I am your host, Brother James Deaton. And as you can tell, we've got my mama with me. Uh, we got special guests tonight. We're going to have uh, Pastor Dink Porter come on again, and this time he's going to give his testimony, preach a little bit. And we've got that amazing young lady, Shelby Nip, is going to come up and sing again. I'm telling you, y'all, if you got your socks on, they're coming off. So, but you pray for Mama and I as we sing, and we hope this blesses your heart. Some people they cheat, steal, and lie. Worthly wealth, then what it will buy. But don't they know? Hello, everybody, and welcome again to the Good News Freedom Show. And as you can tell, we got Miss Shelby Nip back again. Um, if you saw her a couple weeks ago, she blessed your socks off. I just know it. And tonight, she's going to sing us two songs, and just be prepared to be blessed. Go on. Let the Lord use you. This one's called My Jesus. Are you past the point of weary? Are your burdens weighing heavy? too much to carry oh let me tell you about my jesus do you feel that empty feeling cause shame's done all it's dealing are you desperate for some healing oh let me tell you about my jesus he makes a way when there ain't no way rises up from an empty grave ain't no sinner that he can't save let me tell you about my Love is strong and His grace is free And the good news is I know that He can do for you what He's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus And let my Jesus change your life Hallelujah, 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 amen, amen Who can wipe away the tears? Broken dreams and wasted years And tell 
the past and disappear. Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus and all the wrong turns that you would go and undo if you could. Who can work it all for you? Good. Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Who would take my cross to Calvary? Pay the price for all my guilty. Who would care that much about me? Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This next song's called Graves into Gardens. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty prayer.
All right, hello everybody, and welcome to the Good News Freedom Show. I am your host, Brother James Deaton, as every week. As you can tell, we got brother, brother, Pastor Woo. Dink Porter back, and brother. he's going to preach a message. Um, brother Dink, it's yours. Let the hey, Lord use praise you God, you praise God, Brother James. I am envy of what you do here, my friend. He uh, he has a wild setup, and this place is the joy of the Lord is in this place. Amen. Amen. That's my amen crowd out there. Say amen, amen. All right, so I know I don't have much time. So I was sitting in the motel room last night and asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what do you want me to say tomorrow? I want to say your words, what you want me to say. But before that, let's pray. Father, thank you for this time that you've given us here, Father. Bless God. Let, let us touch the hearts and challenge our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So like I said, last night in Cincinnati, 400 teenagers my grandson in my, in my wife and I's room, we didn't sleep at all, let alone for the teenagers, let alone my grandson, okay? But uh, praise God. Amen. God is good, right? Amen. So uh, listen, I want to tell you something about, I'm going to just give you a little bit of, of a, my testimony just in a, in a short clip. There's a lot more to it, but listen what happened. I love to witness. You know, as Christ followers, we are to spread this right here. This good news. I love I love the name of your program, brother. Spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Now listen, I was a I was the youngest of five kids. I was the spoiled one. I could get away with everything. Okay, I was the youngest of five kids, and uh, we lived over in Madison City. We didn't go to church. I'm I'm eight or nine years old, and I remember a family came down from from the edge of the road and invited my family, my parents, to church. You know, I'd never been in church before. I didn't know what, what the first thing about church. We're, like, We're going to church? What's church? I had no idea. All I remember is this. Growing up in, in my house and, and, you know, us boys, we follow dad, right? What dad says, ah, that's cool. I'm going to say that. But what I found out was how my dad talked, it wasn't the church way, okay? So as his son, I talked like dad. So when dad would say something, I would say it. The next thing I know, I'm in the restroom getting my mouth washed out with soap. You know, I'm telling you what, if Sam's Club was in, in, in at, at that time back then, my dad would have bought it by the case because I went, we went through it. And I get started even to tell, that, that, was that zest? That was zest, wasn't it? Okay, uh, ivory soap, I don't know what it was, but I got my mouth washed out with soap so many times I didn't understand why. I was like, well, why are you saying I can't say it? I don't, I don't understand what's going on here. Okay, I was just following in the foot, his footsteps. So I'm at that time, when we went to church, and we walk into the church, you know, this, this church uh, is, is the church I'm in today, is the church that I'm pastoring. I walked into that church at eight, nine years old. We never know what God's plan is for your life. He had, you were born for a purpose, on purpose, for a purpose. And at that time in my life, just walking in that church, I had no idea that 40 years later, I would be the pastor of this church. But God knew. He knew. So um, getting back to the witness, and, and when we went to the church, my mom and dad actually liked it, I guess, because so, we started going there, you know. And what I, what I remember at being eight, nine years old and ten is like, huh, I'm not getting my mouth washed out with soap as much as I used to. I kind of like this place. I'm, I'm going to stay here. And uh, so what was happening there is, is God was changing transforming the mind. Listen, you can't go to any doctor. If, if you do, they will, they'll think you're crazy. You walk in there and say, what can I do for you today? Well, I want to make a doctor's appointment. Okay, w what's wrong with you? I want him to transform my mind. The doctor's going to look at you like you're crazy. You can't, he can't transform your mind. Only God can transform your mind. Only God can take a mess and turn it into a message. And so but what I began to see was my mom and dad changing. There was no fighting and a lot, a lot that was not going on before Brother James and I didn't have to duck for pictures being thrown. Whoa, whoa, that almost got me. You know, so it, there was a changing going on in my parents' life that I didn't know anything about at that time. But what was happening was, it was God was, was changing, renewing their minds. In Romans 12, 2, Romans 12, 2 says this, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is what God will do for you, okay? A lot of times we don't quit doing bad stuff because we try to do it on our own. You can't, I'm telling you, friend, you can't do it on your own. You need God. 
to help you and to transform your mind. And he'll begin to take you on a, on a, on a walk and begin to change you. And, and things that you used to be uh, liking in the world will all of a sudden become like, you know what? That's not as important to me as it once was. What's going on in my life? What, well, God's doing something in your life. He's cleaning your house. He's, he's like he came in and he's moving the furniture around. And sometimes he just throws it out, right? And he puts the new stuff in. So uh, getting back to, to my testimony about how things begin to change, I remember the times just like so many times just like, wow, I like this church. I, I, I got some friends, and, and you know, I, just, I just was just liking everything about it. And then about, I was probably about 27, 28 years old. Uh, I used to love, the, and I still, once a youth pastor, always a youth pastor, okay? So at this time in my life, at 27, 28, married, got two daughters, and uh, I would go up, when I first got to church, I would go up to the youth room, and I'd just hang out with the youth. And I just liked hanging out with them, and just, you know, we'd talk sports, us guys would talk sports, whatever, just hang, kind of hang around, and then I would go back down to Bible study. And I remember being up there, uh, a couple of times, and the youth guy told me, he says, Dink, there's, a, there's something here for you. There's, the kids are drawn to you. I'm like, well, I just like them. I don't know what you're saying, but I just like them, you know, just hang, hanging around with them, whatever. But, you know, I began to pray about it. He said, you need to start praying about what God has for your life, the will, because there's some, definitely, something definitely here. So I just said, whatever, dude, you know, whatever, okay. So uh, I just started praying about it. So I don't even know what this guy's talking about, but, Lord, all I'm saying is yes to you, whatever you have for me. I didn't ask God, well, what, is, what was it? What is it? What does it look like? Like me and my brother was talking back here to, uh, a little bit before I came on here. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the calling. So when we say yes to him, he just gives you everything you need to perform sweet Shelby out here, I can just imagine when she started singing, you know, maybe a little nervous at first. It's like, I don't know if I can do this or not. But once she stepped into it, boy, you stepped into your happy place. And so praise God for that, Shelby. But I just want to say, listen, spread the good news. You never know who's going to be on the other end, other, other end of that receiving, just like we are here tonight. We don't, we don't know who's going to be receiving this. There's going to be people out there worldwide. Well, the James' uh, good news show goes, goes worldwide. But God knows. And if it's a morning time, afternoon time, evening time, whenever you see this, that's your time that God says, hey, I got something for you. Okay? Uh, so quit trying to do it on your own and let God transform you. There, I, my dad, to this day, my mom passed away about six years ago. And she's with Jesus, I know this. But uh, my dad sung this song way back in the day when he got saved. It's called Thanks to Calvary. I'm not going to sing for you. Don't worry about that. This, uh, this place will clear out so fast. Be like, what is that? Uh, uh, Tyler will be back here. Mute. Where's that mute button? <laughs> but he's a song, he sings this song today. And it's called Thanks to Calvary. And the words kind of go like this. Thanks to Calvary, I'm not the man I used to be. Thanks to Calvary. Things are different from them before. And there's even a part in that song where it talks about, uh, I went back to the place where I used to live. And my little boy, talking about me, ran and hid behind the door. And he said, and the song says, I said, honey, sweet boy, you don't need to be afraid anymore. I'm not that man anymore. I'm telling you what, thanks to Calvary, I'm not that man anymore. We can all say that about our lives. You know, all the ones that are here today that are saved say, wow, thanks to Calvary. I'm not who I used to be. How many can say amen to that? Yeah, it, we all can. Uh, praise God. All right, let me give you another couple of scriptures and see what we got here. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says this. Therefore, if anyone, anyone, who's anyone? You, me, anyone. If anyone is in Christ, you're a new creation. The old has gone when we get saved and the new has come. This is what's so exciting to me about the good news, brother. You know that anyone. That, listen, the most famous, I always say this in church, the, the most famous reindeer of all. No, I mean, uh, the, the most famous scripture of all is what? John 3, 16. And I was challenged on this one time sitting in my office years ago. And I'm writing my message out. God's given me this message as plain as can be. And it got to the point, John 3, 16. I'm like, Really, Lord? 
You want me to use John 3, 16? They're not even going to think I studied at all. Everybody knows that one, you know. And the Lord said, but that, that's, that's the scripture. Listen, we, we, sometimes we, we miss the scripture. For God so loved who? The world. All the people out there that are not saved. Us at one time, we weren't saved, but he still loved us. He said, if anyone, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever, who's, an os, who's the whosoever? I'm a whosoever. You're a whosoever. You at home are a whosoever. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. As a pastor, the ones that are here we know, we get this question all the time. How can your loving God send somebody to hell? God doesn't send any, some, anybody to hell. You send yourself there. You send yourself. If me, I, we, we have, we're free to choose, right? We're free to choose. You know it. You're alive. You're hearing this message. God may, if you don't do this and get saved, God may show you, if you might say, I never got the opportunity. He may rewind us and say, this, see this guy right here? You're watching it. He's giving you the opportunity to get saved. You declined me. And he, we don't, these are the words we don't want to hear from God. Depart from me. I never knew you. See, God wants a relationship with you. It's just a, this whole Christian thing, denomination thing. We're all Christ followers, amen? That's what it is. We're Christ followers. Praise God. I'm so glad that, that you chose Christ. So glad that you chose Christ, Brother James. So glad you chose him. Because he's working through you. We're vessels. And when we lift our hands like this, it's almost like a funnel that God's pouring down into us and giving us everything that we need. There's nothing that God doesn't know about you and doesn't care about you. God is the author of life, the giver, and also the taker. And all he wants you to do in this dash, say you were born in 1950, 60, 70, 40, doesn't matter. You're living in your dash right now. On your tombstone, it'll say 1946, dash to whatever. But you're living in your dash right now. And that dash is so important. This is a time where you know what you need to do. If you're not saved, you need to get saved. Don't worry about all the other things. Don't worry about the person on your left or your right or your, your wife or your, 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 all these other things and your workers and you might get persecuted. So what? Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. And if you are like my testimony, you know, no one's perfect. You know, I, I tell my congregation all the time, if you see me coming in here and I get up on this pulpit and I got an SC cape on, it means super Christian, on my back or on a, like a Superman cake, have me committed because I done lost it. I need God every hour, every second, every minute. I need him. I need him. I need him. He gives me what I need when I, when, I, when I come near him. He says, those who draw, draw nigh to me, Scripture says, and I, God, will draw near to you. But we have an, we have an obligation. We've got to draw near to him. We've got to go to him. He's already here waiting on you, but he's waiting on you to take that step. Won't you take that step with me today, friend? Won't you take that step with me today? We're living in a world that the time is short. None of us are promised tomorrow. You can slip out into eternity. I know people all the time, and they set out their clothes in the morning. This is what I'm wearing to work tomorrow. This is what I'm wearing to school tomorrow. And they pass away in their sleep. Were they ready? It could happen to me and you anytime. We've got to be ready. If you're not ready, you need to get ready. All right? I'm ready to, to, to pray that prayer with you right now. If you'll meet it with all your heart and say these words, God will save you. It's his words, what he says. He will save you. Meaning with your heart, friend. Bow your head with me and repeat after me. It says, dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. <laughs> Sometimes I even feel like a loser. Sometimes I feel like I don't even belong here in this world. I'm trying to find my place in this world. Well, friend, you're not going to find it without Jesus. Back to our prayer. If you mean business with God, he means business with you. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come live in my heart. 
come transform my mind. The things that I've been trying to do on my own are not working. I need you to transform and renew my mind like they did this young man's dad and himself. He did this to me as well. Come transform my mind. Be my God. Be my Lord. Help me find a place to worship where you want me to be. To be able to give what you've given back. Give back to, to what you've given me. I want to give it back what you've given me. The gifts of the Spirit. Oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you said that prayer, let Brother James know on here, okay? God bless you all. All right. Brother Dink, thank you for coming. God bless you, Sister Brother. Sister Shelby, thank you, for thank having you me. so much for Shelby. playing. Shelby, woo! <laughs> uh, Praise Brother God. Dink, if you would. You're singing as well, brother. Uh, thank you and your mom. You guys, you are awesome. I love it. I can listen right. to that all day long. Okay, then you're going to have to buy a CD. I'm going to buy a CD. All right. <laughs> um, and I've got them in the car. Oh, well, so go anyway. Get go get it, brother. Yeah. Um, if you would, tell everybody about your church, where you're located, and then your service times. Okay. We are Mansfield Open Bible Church in Mansfield, Ohio. You can find us on Facebook. And the ad address is 1150 Rayfield Drive in, in Madison area in Mansfield. Okay. And we start at 10 a.m. On Sunday mornings, people start showing up at 9 o'clock because we got a connect center that's right next to the sanctuary. You have free coffee, free donuts, and uh, just fellowship. We fellowship before, and you know what, Brother James? That room's more full in the, in after service than it is before service. Awesome. People just don't want to go home. I'm like, I want to go home. They won't let me go home, <laughs> okay? But that's good because we, we have fellowship together, and right. uh, God is good. Amen. All, All right. right. Well, again, I thank you for coming. I thank Shelby. Thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you, Shelby. You're awesome. Praise I'm telling you, God. you're awesome. Um, She's come to our church. Yeah. There you go. It's the same. You're hurting. <laughs> All right. Um, but as we tell you guys every week, be good to each other on purpose. Good Lord willing, we'll be here next week. Um, love y'all. See you. Love y'all. God bless you. Thanks for having me.